Jesus Christ. Jake's cool, right? He gives off some pedophile vibes, but it's cool. He's like in his mid-20s, so it'll, it'll still work for him for a couple years. Um, all right, guys, so how are we feeling? We ready for this next comic? Yeah. yeah, we feeling happy, right? Yeah? All right, we'll keep that laughter and keep those applause going for your next comic, all right? Sean O'Shaughnessy, everybody. <laughs> What's up, guys? How you doing? What's up? How you guys doing? Nice to see you all. What's going on? Hi. Oh, this is a weird microphone. I'm gonna put this back on. Hey, how is everybody doing? Nice to see you all. Let's start over. Let's just start over. Hey, how you guys doing? Thanks for being here, hanging out. Give it up for Pat and Logan running this fucking fun show in here. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Uh, he was like, dude, this show's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be at a sick brewery. I showed up at time. Just like a fun guy's house, you know? It's just like a guy that graduated college, but not mentally, you know? He's like, there's a ping pong table. He's like, dude, it's gonna be awesome. There's a food truck. That's a van. I don't know if you guys saw that. That's a food van. That's a food van. He's like, there's gonna be a lot of great comedians. I'm basically a Walmart greeter. What's up, guys? How you doing? I graduated high school. How you guys doing? Nice to see you all. Uh, you guys think that Rumpelstiltskin was just a really nice guy named Rumpel that was bullied about being uncircumcised? Is that a possibility? I've been thinking about that a lot today. Uh, do you guys know what love languages are? That's okay, don't make any noise. Uh, yeah. There's five of them. I didn't either, don't worry about it. I didn't know when some, my girl told me about it. She's like, uh, Sean, I just learned about love languages. What do you think that your love language is? And I was like, I don't know. I think Spanish chicks are sexy. And she's like, ah, I'm Jewish and fuck you. And then she explained what they were to me. And she goes, I think your love language is acts of service because you always do nice things for me and you like doing it. She says, what do you think that my love language is? And I said, I don't know. Is lying a love language? Because that's a really nice way of saying, I like when you do shit for me. And it's great. You love it too, don't you? <laughs> I'm out here. Uh, women's Day just, can we give it up for women in this room? Come on. You too. Clap, man. Give it up for women. Come on. There's some fucking great ladies in here tonight. Uh, women's Day passed like a month and a half ago. I don't know if you guys, I don't remember seeing you guys at the parade. I was there. Uh, you guys probably yeah, didn't recognize me. Uh, I was there. Uh, I actually had to babysit my sister's uh, kids, my niece and nephew, for that uh, day. She's got two twin girls. She's like, just don't be yourself and you'll be fine. Just go in there and don't be yourself. So I, I picked them up from school and we, we were going to the parade and they made signs at school. And uh, one of the signs said, women make the world go round. And another sign said, women run the world. And I was like, that's a good message. Like, I don't remember that when I was growing up. I think that's a nice message that they're sending to these young girls. Uh, so I went to the parade with the kids, I came home, and I acted like that happened. I got a phone call from my sister like an hour after I dropped them off, and she said, what the fuck did you say to my daughters? They're crying their eyes out right now. And I was like, uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about, the, the truth? I told them the truth? She's like, they're seven, Sean. What is the truth? And I said, I told them that money runs the world, <laughs> and that gravity makes it go round. You know, I changed her sign, so what? I was just trying, it's Women's Day, I was trying to be nice. She's like, you're a fucking dickhead, Sean. What, explain to me why you thought that you thought this would be a good idea to explain this on Women's Day. And I was like, uh, sister, I don't have enough time to explain math and science to a bunch of ladies right now. I don't have time for this, come on. Happy Women's Day, you know? Uh, seems like there's a lot of families in here. It's a couple families. So don't make any noise if you send pictures of your genitals to anyone. Exactly. <laughs> you don't have to say it. There's like moms and dads and shit in here. That's fine. I did. Uh, I took one dick pic and one porn. And I retired <laughs> at 18 from the industry, which is the average I hear. Um, I remember I took my dick pic on a Motorola Razor. I was like 18, and even then, I'm like, man, the clarity on these cameras is incredible. <laughs> you know? Man, there's too many megapixels on this phone. Uh, I took a sex video uh, one time. I was uh, 19. I took it with my girlfriend, consenting girlfriend at the time. Uh, we watched it together. It was kind of romantic, and then I, I killed her afterwards because <laughs> I don't want anybody to see that. It was disgusting, you know? <laughs> don't videotape yourself having sex unless you're hot. 
I'm not. You know, it's great. I don't have the lighting for porn. I'm like a candlelight, you know? Dim those lights. I don't need that light. I, uh, I watched it back with her. She's alive. We don't, we're not, she's alive. We're not together. She's doing great. She's not here. She's doing better than me right now. And um, we watched it back together, and I deleted it, like, next to her. Like, right after we watched it. Just out of, like, guilt and shame, you know? I couldn't, I didn't want it to be on a hard drive. At 18, I had this wherewithal. It's like, we gotta get rid of this right now. And I think it was pointless. I could have kept it, you know? Because if I put it on a big screen, right here, right now, on this, this beautiful, exposed brick. Uh, beautiful, it's, well, I love what they're doing with the place. If I put it on a big screen right now, it looks less like a porn and more like a, do you guys, you guys have the Discovery Channel? You ever seen like a, a ghost hunter documentary? <laughs> you ever seen one of those? It's just like a couple of white people in a dark room. <laughs> the camera's way too close to their face. It was less sexy and it was more spooky. I'm telling you, it was, it was gross. If I put it on repeat in my apartment 24 hours a day and looped it, you'd be like, man, this fucking guy loves the Blair Witch Project, doesn't he? This fucking guy loves that movie. Yeah, love it. Uh, this is fucking awesome. You guys are cool. Uh, I feel like a lot of people... I, I look racist. I feel like I'm a good company. <laughs> I look racist. I, but people think I'm racist because I'm dumb. You know? Because I think if you're a racist guy, you have to be a little dumb. But sometimes you could just be dumb and not racist at all. You know? I'm going to give you an example. Uh, like two weeks ago, I was reading a headline about that New York City terror attack. I love to bring up terrorism and comedy. Uh, about the New York City terrorist attack, and I, uh, I was reading it out loud to my girlfriend, and I pronounced the word ashamed as Ash Ahmed. <laughs> you know? You know? That's fucking definitely racist and more dumb, you know? I think that's 90% dumb and 10% racist if you ask me. Anybody in here have a conservative dad? I'm gonna say 85%. I'm gonna go 85% of this room, maybe 90. I do. I got a conservative dad. He's a good guy. Uh, he, uh, he stopped watching the NFL on Sundays because of the political reasons. Doesn't watch it. I went over his house. It's a blank screen. There's other channels. He can watch, he can watch anything else. He just stares and watches a blank screen. Good for you, Dad. Uh, but he used to love the NFL. Like He met Vince Lombardi when he was growing up. Huge Packers fan. Doesn't watch it anymore at all. Uh, I just think it's like, I mean, I, I understand it's your thing, but like you're biting off your nose to spite your face on this one. I think a little bit, Dad. Like a month ago, he saw a Ritz Cracker commercial and there was a transgender in the commercial. Loves Ritz Crackers, doesn't eat them at all anymore. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, white people love Ritz Crackers. That was like 80% of his diet. Doesn't eat them at all anymore. So now I have a new hobby where I just call my dad up and lie about brands taking political stances against him <laughs> in hopes that in like six months he's just naked eating boiled chicken alone, <laughs> you know? <laughs> just by himself. It's working, it's working. I was like, Dad, you won't believe it. Costco called the jeans department. I didn't know they had a jeans department. They wanted to fund the police. <laughs> I told him, Werther's original or BLM people, he lost 15 pounds. I might be a new nutritionist, actually. I might. It's working out good. I got notes here. I don't remember his shit. Um, you guys are from Horsham? I think I got, I'd say 50 50, right? Some Philly, I see some Philly comics, some Horsham people. Thanks for coming out. I, uh, I'm not from, I'm Quim, excuse me, I'm from Queens, New York originally. I moved to Philly to do comedy like two years ago. I left for a little bit and I came back uh, like six months later and I was like, I don't know, either gentrification is really slow or it's a lie. <laughs> All right, you guys live in Horsham. Okay, cool. <laughs> this is a Horsham guy, 90% Horsham. Uh, I like my neighborhood. It reminds me of my like blue collar neighborhood in, in Queens, New York. It's gritty. Uh, there's a, a couple across the street, a black couple with a bunch of kids. Uh, they're playing football outside all the time. Really nice family. I always say hello to them. Once in a while when I'm going inside my house, they throw me a football. I throw it back to them. And then I just put my keys in the door and go inside. And they don't care, but it is the greatest part of my day. You know? You ever seen the Keanu Reeves Hard Knocks movie? It's just like that for 10 seconds. Don't see it. It's a bad movie. That's okay. 
<laughs> don't see him. Uh, but I got to know these people and I really like them. Uh, the other day I was leaving my apartment in South Philly and there's this dude that walks up to me, no shirt, no shoes, obviously on drugs, and he was like, yo man, I got these bars, dude. I'm selling these bars. It's Xanax for you and you, it's Xanax. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I'm selling these bars. And I just like, I was in a bad mood, he caught me in a, in a way, the kids were across the street playing ball and I freaked out. I'm like, dude, this is not your fucking neighborhood. Get the fuck out of here. Like, there's little kids, like, trying to play sports, and you're, like, peddling your fucking drugs. Like, beat it, dickhead. Like, I don't want you here. Like, I live here, and you don't. And as I was saying that, a couple of black kids came behind me in, like, football pads. And I was like, oh, nice. I have an army behind me. This is fucking sick. So, like, the guy kind of takes a step to me, this crackhead. And uh, I turn to look at the kids, like, are you guys going to help me? And it was, like, a kind of a pause. Like, crackhead looks at kids. Kids look at me. Everybody looks at each other. And they were like... We're actually on the drug dealer side on this one, guy. Why don't you go take your fix gear bicycle and go fuck yourself, you know? He's been here longer than you, in my opinion. All right, I was hoping to end a little stronger than that, but uh, that's okay. That's okay. I, I wanna give you one more.